supremacy of God and believing in the fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual to hereby proclaim in solemn praise the establishment of a free and democratic sovereign nation founded on spiritual values and in which no man, woman, or child shall ever be slave or bondsman to anyone or their labor exploited or their lives frustrated by deprivation and do hereby provide by these articles for the indivisible unity and creation under God of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. It's Tuesday, January 11th, 2022, and the Morning Edition is live. On today's show, the fight continues against the highly transmissible Omicron variant. We remember majority rule, the National Youth Party are looking to expand to higher heights, and the Bahamas Retired Boxers Association formed. So let's get the morning started off right. is brought to you by We Buy You Sell Company, your leading hurricane impact windows, doors, and tile specialist. Good morning, good Tuesday. Yeah, trying to recharge after a long holiday weekend. We celebrated majority rule on Monday, so it's back to our brand new week, Tuesday, and I'm trying to recharge. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a great majority rule. It's a beautiful Tuesday. And glad that you can stay with us. Want to send a big shout out to my mother, Joanne Rolls. She's recovering from the flu. She's always listening and watching uh, the morning edition. So big shouts out to Joanne Roll. So uh, had an interesting experience over the weekend. I, she was sick with the flu. And so I went to purchase a flu cold aid. And the prices, I mean, astronomical prices on some of those flu and cold aids. Uh, medicine, uh, I don't know if you have the same experience, but it, wow, that's another story. But anyway, um, we've got a lot in store for you this morning. A brand new week, as I said, a lot celebrated uh, the majority rule service. Want to send a big shout out to Raymond Wells, who delivered a powerful, profound message for the nation yesterday. And I watch from the comfort of the studios here at the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. And it's so good to see that uh, people, black, brown, yellow, everybody coming together in unity, which is so good. Um, everybody from rep represented from various political, social spheres came together to celebrate a defining moment in our nation's history. And so that is very good, all right? So uh, we're going to give you some great news uh, stories and features. We've got a feature focusing on bodybuilding. Bodybuilding is making a comeback after COVID-19. We're going to find out a little bit about boxing. A retired boxing association is being created. Uh, we're going to talk more about the Sydney's impact. A lot of people are still talking about the impact of global icon, Kid Allen native. I'm from Kid Allen, so I feel so special and proud of Sir uh, Sidney Poitier, and we're going to be talking about him. But uh, we're going to find out what's happening traffic-wise and weather-wise, but traffic is first. Antoine Smith is keeping my company this morning. So glad about that. Antoine, how are you doing this morning? What's going on? Good morning, Desmond. I'm doing great. And good morning to all you early morning traffic commuters out there. We're back here again in studio with your first look at morning traffic. But first, here's a look at the overnight stats. According to the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Division, there were a total of six traffic incidents over a 24-hour period, all of them minor, involving no injuries. And we're just beyond that 7 o'clock hour where roadways are still relatively quiet. But for your main thoroughfares of Prince Charles, Carmichael Road, and Sir Milo Butler Highway, you might just want to get out a little early and get ahead of that rush. And just a reminder, the speed limit is 20 miles per hour throughout most roadways in the Bahamas, except where indicated otherwise. And Desmond, I hope you obey the speed limit getting to work this morning. And that's all the time we have for now. I'm going to toss it back to you. Well, Antoine, I am a cautious driver. Yes, I am a cautious driver. 
<laughs> Weather-wise, on the outside, looking pretty good. Prefrontal activity associated with the cold front near South Florida and the extreme Northwest Bahamas will continue to support pockets of unsettled weather across portions of the Northwest and Central Bahamas. As the system moves southeastwards, strong high pressure will build across the area in the wake of this frontal system later today. The daytime high temperature, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Overnight low, 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's a look now at your extended forecast. The nation's chief announcing enhanced measures to monitor and control the progress of the COVID-19 pandemic in the Bahamas. During a national address on Sunday, Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis warned about inevitable exposure to highly transmissible Omicron variant, noting the government will continue the delicate balance act of managing COVID-19 and keeping the economy going. We have more than $10 billion in debt, and the only way forward is through sustained economic growth. I spent much of 2020 and 2021 traveling the country from north to south. And what I saw in home after home and in community after community convinced me that the economic crisis made worse by closed borders and lockdowns caused at least as much pain and anguish as the health crisis. Since March 2020, we've had a dashboard for COVID cases. But what if over the same time, we had a dashboard that showed how many small businesses were closing or how many Bahamian families fell out of middle class into poverty. This past weekend, the government implemented free COVID-19 testing utilizing sites at the Kendall G. Isaacs Gymnasium and the Malia Resort. Press Secretary at the Office of the Prime Minister, Clint Watson. The persons logged on, they signed up, they turned out. Everyone was extremely pleased with the level of service. There was no wait, there were no lines. They were able to walk straight through, uh, receive their test, leave. Some of them, even before they could get in their car, getting the results. Um, and so we're extremely pleased that the process is very organized. Uh, it's efficient. People feel safe. People feel uh, as though there is some level of protection and confidentiality. And so we're excited about it. Prime Minister, as you would be aware, uh, um, has given us a mandate that we can increase the amount of tests that we can do on a particular day. And um, so we're excited about that. On Saturday and Sunday, there were 400 that we had the capacity to do. Uh, he's allowed us to increase that to 800 and then to 1,000. The Ministry of Health has reported 349 newly confirmed cases of COVID-19. 314 in New Providence, 14 in Grand Bahama, 11 in Exuma, one each in Abaco and Eleuthera, with eight locations pending. 47 cases have a history of travel within the last 14 days. Females account for 184 of the new cases. 110 cases are hospitalized, five of them in the intensive care unit. The overall case count now sits at 28,968. Of that number, 5,812 cases are active. The death toll remains at 717. Health officials continuing to track the progress of the COVID-19 vaccination campaign. As of January 8th, 156,777 persons were fully vaccinated, while 147,819 have taken one dose. Combined, they account for a total of 312,840 doses administered. There is still no definitive date as to when students can return to in-person learning as government and health officials continue to monitor ballooning COVID-19 cases in the country. Several weeks ago, the Ministry of Education announced that the planned return to hybrid learning for January would be pushed back at least two weeks. As for how... The unions representing teachers feel about the continued absence of in-person learning. Minister of Education and Technical and Vocational Training, the Honorable Glennis Hannah Martin, says education stakeholders have been engaged. They're in full agreement with that decision. So we have to see um, what the advice is as we get to the end of that 14-day period. Uh, the good news here is that the variant that is rampant does not, in fact, have the consequences as previous, as previous 
variants. And we are watching that and we are analyzing it now. The, uh, the medical team is analyzing the consequences of it. <coughs> we do note, though, that we yet have vaccines for children and we are working assiduously to have it in. We also note that vaccines are not available for children under five years of age, which will impact our preschools. Mm -hmm. And we intend to, to at least try to have very soon vaccines for children in the country. A Defense Force Marine shot and killed in a police-involved shooting early Monday morning. Reports are that shortly before 4 a.m., officers on routine patrol ordered a suspect out of a vehicle parked near a vacant lot on Dunmore Avenue, Chippingham. Police say once on the outside, the male charged at one of the officers. An officer in fear of his life then discharged his weapon at the suspect, hitting him in the upper body. EMS rushed to the scene, pronouncing the male lifeless. Investigations continue. Two reads laid at the Farrington Road to Linden Pinling Center on Monday in commemoration of one of the nation's most defining moments, Majority Rule, a culmination of more than 25 years of the Bahamian suffrage movement. The historic day on January 10, 1967, endowed every Bahamian with fundamental freedoms. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Progressive Global Party Chairman, the Honorable Fred Mitchell, acknowledging that majority rule, although a reminder of our past, is also a reminder of how much more work must be done. Majority rule led also to national independence, led also to the changing of the law so that today, everyone over 18 can vote. At the head of that movement was the Progressive Liberal Party. But Sir Lyndon Pindling left us a charge. <coughs> now that we have majority rule, the charge is economic empowerment. and mobile services provided by Cable Bahamas Business Solutions helps our customers help their customers adapt to the new way of paying for things. Digital Wallets makes your transactions faster, more convenient, and secure. Whether it's using a debit card at the grocery store or making online payments for your monthly expenses, Digital Wallets, powered by Cable Bahamas Business Solutions, makes it better. For more information on our fixed and mobile services, contact the experts at 601-8911 in Nassau or 602-8811 in the Family Islands. This public service announcement is brought to you by the communications section of the Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training. The Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training will conduct a community walkabout in the Freetown constituency on Tuesday, January 11th, 2022, starting from the Uriah Mackfee Primary School at 9.30 a.m. This walkabout seeks to reach every child who has not signed on to the LMS online platform or has been consistently absent from online classes. In observance of majority rule, the event took place at Living Waters Kingdom Ministries on Monday. Here's Carla Palmer. Monday, January 10th, 2022, marks 55 years of majority rule in the Bahamas. The service of Thanksgiving, organized by the Bahamas Christian Council, is another anniversary in acknowledgement of the progress made toward national development advanced by this group of persons. Thank you for those freedom fighters who answered your call. Thank you for this Bahama land. Thank you for the men and women who see it fit to fight for what we are celebrating today. And so for another year, the names of those freedom fighters will read one more time in recognition and appreciation of their service and sacrifice. The men who were sworn in as members of that 1967 parliament were Prime Minister Lyndon Pillen, Andrus Cambay, Deputy Prime Minister Arthur Hanna, Anstown, Preston Aubrey, Eleuthera, Clarence A. Bain, Andrus, Mangrove Key, Alvin Brennan, Harbor Allen, Mallow Butler, Bainstown, Clifford Darlin, Angliston, Elwood Donaldson, Kalani, Randall Fox, St. Barnabas, 
Arthur Folks, Grantstown, Calton Francis, Winton, Warren Lavarity, West End and Bimini, Curtis McMillan, Fort Charlotte, Uriah McPhee, Sherlair, Maurice Moore, Grand Bahama, Edmund Moxie, Coconut Grove, my father. Oh, I love Delhi. Jimmy Shepard, St. Michael's, George Thompson, Eleuthera, James Thompson, Fort Finn Cancel, and Cecil Wallace Whitfield, St. Agnes. These are the names of the 20 member of parliament that ushered in majority rule and formed the government of the Bahamas. While majority rule was observed on January 10, 1967, the movement had begun long before, in 1942, with significant events leading up to that day. First Vice President of the Christian Council and Senior Pastor of Bahamas Harvest Church, Mario Moxie, hadn't been born yet when majority rule was ushered in. I can only imagine the sense of pride and dignity in the hearts of the men who had the privilege of being part of that historic occasion in human history. Delivering the sermon, senior pastor of Living Waters Kingdom Ministries, Apostle Raymond Wells, called on Bahamians to learn how to commemorate and appreciate our history. He declared that 2022 means better as majority rule initially started the groundwork. Majority rule means better. No more crumbs. The whole loaf but God from Zion, where do you black or white? Glory to God there. During that same ecumenical service, a call was made by Pastor Moxie for a National Museum of History to properly recognize Bahamian contributors to nation building. Profound service uh, at Living Waters Kingdom Ministries yesterday. I had an opportunity to watch the service from the comfort of the studios here at the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. A defining moment as pointed out, majority rule, how do we now keep this rich legacy alive for generations yet unborn? I was born in 1978, um, so I always hear that my parents, uh, cousins, aunts talk about 67 and uh, the lead up to the uh, independent celebrations and its uh, <clears throat> fight for equality. Uh, this issue is not a PLP issue. I think all Bahamians from various spectrums, from various political persuasions um, uh, should get involved. It's an issue that we all should celebrate and reflect on, majority rule, and I'm sure uh, we're going to be hearing much more about this uh, particular event in 1967 for days and years and months to come, all right? Sad passing of a world-renowned actor and Kid Allen native Sir Sidney Poitier last week remains a somber thought for many, but as Lloyd Allen tells us, one local is doing his part to keep the memory of legends like Sir Sidney and others to live on. It has all started as a childhood hobby. This is a book that should be read. For several decades, amateur image collector Arnold Wilson has been collecting the story of the Bahamas. In a recent interview, Wilson invited us into his home to see firsthand what he has amassed since starting the hobby at the age of 13 back in the early 1960s. When I look at these things now, like I had no reason or had any foresight of what I was doing. I, I, can't get my, I, can't, I cannot give myself any credit for this. That's why I said this is God's gift. But there are only things that interest me. Those interests include dozens of local icons and families, track and field, historical moments, and also Sir Sidney Poitier. Following the recent passing of the international film star, Wilson says he is saddened by the news, but is thankful that he took the time to capture so many moments of Sir Sidney's public life when visiting the Bahamas or breaking ground professionally. The one many um, received the Academy, which was in 63, but it even came in 64. I was present at that. I was young, but I only live a block away from where the motorcade passed on Collins Avenue. One might ask why someone would dedicate so much of their time, effort, and resources to a hobby. Well, Wilson says he does it to preserve history, but also to pass the time. But I always had a sleeping problem, okay? Like 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm in my little room with this and just cutting out and pacing and put it in, in, in some order. This is a late night hobby. You don't have to go outside. 
and you don't have to leave the premises. Wilson says over the 56 years he has poured into the hobby, one thing that helps to motivate him is the appreciation he gets from those persons captured in those moments. This is my passion. And when I get started on this, it's like I can just keep on going from one subject to the next. That anybody really could appreciate it. It's not only because if I'm in this particular area or I play soft, only soft, but no. It's, this, is, this is what I have, it's history. Well, certainly a great Bahamian who's collected, uh, who has, I mean, the most historic memorabilia, and I've got to definitely uh, check him out, and I had an opportunity to, to speak with him last year. Hopefully he'll get together uh, this year and, and relive some of the historic moments. Uh, interesting figure, and we salute him this morning. Very good story there, Lloyd. As we head to the break, we take a look back and today in Bahamian history, January 11th, 1952, the Anglican Provincial Synod was held in Nassau for the first time. Also, January 11th, 1957, the Nassau shop officially opened for business. supplies almost $50 million in revenue for Androsians every year. These priceless resources will continue to provide renewable benefits for thousands of people for years to come, as long as we take long-term action to preserve what's rightfully ours. The natural environment has played a vital role in our culture and economy for generations. Let's take care of nature, and nature will take care of us. Well, it's Tuesday. Glad you're back. The Bahamas Retired Boxers Association has been created. Former Bahamian cruiserweight champion Pat Strong is a chairman. Former president of the Bahamas Olympic Committee, Wellington Miller, is the vice chair. This association was born out of the need to properly recognize our amateur and professional boxers, our referees, managers, coaches, and promoters. It's something that we can uh, keep our retired boxers and keep the boxing community together because, you know, when everybody retired, this one go that way, the next one go that way, you don't get to see them. And, you know, some days now we can, we have hold and we get an address of where everybody are, especially the older boxers like Ray Minus and uh, um, Sugar Kid Bo and all of them. They have so much to con contribute with knowledge and with history. So sometimes we can go there and pick them up and drive them around and, and just talk with them and go visit them at their home. Since they're getting low in age, we need to be there, be there for them, and this organization will form that. Strong spoke about why this was the right time to form this association. We in the boxing fraternity recognize that if we don't do it, no one else is going to do it. And you, you take, for example, uh, Elias Robert, who was our first world champion. Uh, you, you, you ask young kids nowadays, who is Elijah Robert, and no one knows. But we intend to change that. We are having a, a, an awards program in September, where we have a list of 11 awards we'll be handing out. In addition to that, we will be creating the Hall of Fame. In April, late April, early May, we plan to host a photo exhibition of Bahamian champions, Bahamian boxing champions. And that, that, that would be a photo, a photo exhibition of all amateur and professional boxing champions, promoters, uh, managers, trainers, uh, and so forth. Well, like all sports, bodybuilding is navigating its way through the COVID-19 pandemic. Former president of the Bahamas Bodybuilding and Fitness Federation and current vice president for the Central American and Caribbean region, Danny Summer, or Sumner, says it continues to be a challenge. Bodybuilding is a sport where we pose, okay, and uh, where collectively you have sometimes up to 100 athletes on stage. So COVID have, have made a, a major impact on how that has been done now. We cannot uh, have a stage where we have 
more than 50 or 30 articles on stage at a time. And as a result, the IFBB, the International uh, uh, um, Position on Bodybuilding, has changed to a stand now where we have to be careful as to how we train and how we produce athletes in this present time. So when you go to the gym, you're going to be careful how you train. Or one time ago, you'll see maybe two athletes training together simultaneously. You probably wouldn't see that now. Despite the current COVID environment, Sumner says he still anticipates events to take place throughout the region. The International Bodybuilding event will be held in Bermuda. And then there's another one that's going to be in Aruba. Uh, what has happened, because of COVID, uh, the CAC has diminished quite a bit. So consequently, what has been going on, a lot of the Caribbean countries, such as Barbados, uh, Bermuda, Aruba, and St. Martin, they have had what they call Grand Prix. Those Grand Prix is like a small version of the CAC, and they do carry cash prizes. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is here, and just like the other available COVID-19 vaccines, it is safe and effective. Just one jab for now offers you protection against the serious risks of COVID-19, including lowering your risk of hospitalization and death. Get vaccinated to protect yourself and help reduce the spread of COVID-19. Make your appointment now at vax.gov.bs. Public Service Announcement is brought to you by the Communications Section of the Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training. The Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training will conduct a community walkabout in the Freetown constituency on Tuesday, January 11, 2022, starting from the Uriah McPhee Primary School at 9.30 a.m. This walkabout seeks to reach every child who has not signed on to the LMS online platform or has been consistently absent from online classes. Welcome back to the morning edition. The Rotary Club of Nassau hosting its annual Vision Expo at the Church of God of Prophecy. Club member Dr. Anita Brown-Dean tells us more. Last year we decided to expand the expo and be able to not only because we realized that a lot of people still was falling through the cracks, they were doing the screenings and never going any further. So last year we ended up um, increasing uh, our community service by providing the eye exams along with the screenings and also if they from the eye exams if there was um, glasses needed to be able to provide the glasses as well now this project as i'm being told started about eight years ago and for the club reaching out to the younger persons in the community was extremely vital the project has been more for the children because we realize that a lot of times um, children fall through the cracks and people may, in schools, they may have issues that people just think children are disruptive or they have um, issues there. Um, you don't even know why they're acting out in classes. Um, so we realize also that learning is a, being able to learn you need to be able to see so and a lot of times children are not able to express themselves to sh tell you that they can't see they just don't know that they're what they're doing well applause for the rotary club for reaching out to those in the Senegal community now the bahamas national youth choir celebrated an iconic 30 years of existence in 2021 and as antoine smith tells us this morning for year 31 the famous Bahamian Chorale is looking to hit a higher note. The 2022 calendar jam-packed with high-profile events. So we are in Carnegie Hall in May of this year. And a couple milestones to hit along the way. The Bahamas National Youth Choir is gearing up for what some would call a triumphant year. And to start it off, they're scouting for something extra to add to the ensemble. 
Um, so our journey starts off quick. We're looking for people who are ready to hit the ground running. And then from there, we have been invited back to France. And so we're looking for, first of all, individuals who have a passion for music. Hence the choir's ongoing virtual auditions. A pivot from the norm as officials steadily adjust their practices due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But for as much things have changed, they've also remained the same. As the chorale this year heads to the City of Love, where a two-hour Bahamian ensemble before the France Festival Committee awaits. And this time, they're not holding back. I wish to increase the size of the choir. Uh, the traveling size of the choir normally is capped at 40. I wish to increase the number of participants. Um, those who may not um, be willing to travel at this time, we understand, you know, there might be some challenges. So we're looking for individuals, first of all, to start. But for those who do join, according to choir director Dexter Fernander, an exciting year awaits. We produced three music videos last year during the pandemic. We're looking at doing one more um, music video, uh, but our focus is getting the choir ready for some of these big presentations. Tickets are already on sale at Carnegie Hall, and so we, we have to be ready for um, our presentation in New York. Virtual audition submissions are set to close on January 15th. I think I'll make a great tenor uh, for the National Youth Choir. I could sing, but I'll have to work on my dance moves. Right, Rodney? <laughs> That's a wrap. That's a wrap. It's been fun having you along for the morning edition. It's a wrap. But be sure to stay tuned to the ZNS Network for news as it happens. TV and radio updates throughout the day. Then you can tune into the Northern Edition at 6.30 and the Bahamas tonight at 7. That's a wrap. Thank you so much for joining us. Make it a great day. Drinks, my nice drink, everything she make me feel like a king.